Welcome guys to learn political science. Starting with this video, we will begin with the concepts of political theory. And what better way to start than starting with the concept of liberty. Yes, on today's video, we are going to look at an important thinker whose work has contributed to the concept of liberty significantly. He is Benjamin Constant. Without much delay, let's begin. Uh, the idea of Benjamin Constant was presented in his essay, The Liberty of Ancients Compared with That of the Moderns, written in the early 1800s. Uh, in order to understand his fundamental ideas and arguments, let us look a little bit into his life. Benjamin was a key thinker in the French classical liberal tradition. He was born in 1767 in Switzerland, but originally he was a descendant of the French Huguenot family who actually sought refuge in Switzerland from religious persecution. Then between 1783 to 85, he studied at the University of Edinburgh, where he was introduced to writings of thinkers such as Adam Smith, Edmund Burke and more, which remain an influence on his thought. Then, in 1794, Benjamin met a lady called Germaine de Stahl, who was a leading intellectual herself. Uh, she was to have an enduring influence on his life. Uh, they even moved to Paris in 1795, and this was a tumultuous period in the history of France, where there were massive political and social upheavals. So basically, having to live through this period, this was what shaped Benjamin's thought. Although he was sympathetic to the cause of the revolutions, he began to question why was it drastically going wrong in France. That was when he came up with his theory comparing liberty of how it was in ancient times with modern times. So the reason why this distinction he felt was necessary was because he thought we fail to recognize them as separate ideas and because of which it leads to great troubles such as the French Revolution itself. Now to understand these two liberties, he differentiated between um, the ancient republics and the modern nations. First, ancient republic was small and modern nations were large. Ancient republics were confined within limited territory. The exercise of political authority was a right for all and at the same time submission to that fearsome power was also considered a necessity for all. They come together in the public square to discuss and make decisions on issues relating to war and peace and also they carry out most of the functions of the government collectively and directly. Whereas the great states, which are much larger than the ancient republics, cannot operate in the same way as the ancient times, especially carrying out the duties of the citizens and the degree of individual freedom could not be the same in both cases. Today, the great states are more obscure. This reduces the dependence of the individuals on the nation. Next, we have bellicose and valuing peace in the modern times. For the free states of ancient times, war was the price they had to pay to purchase their security, their independence, and their whole existence. Uh, those who did not want to be conquerors could not put down their sword for fear of being conquered. So essentially, everything in ancient times was related to war. Today, everything is reckoned in terms of peace. Great states today are civilized enough to find war burdensome. It is strong enough not to need to fear invasion. Then we have anti-trade during ancient times and commercial in modern times. War preceded com commerce. Both war and commerce are two different ways of achieving the same end, that is, coming to own what one wants to own. Commerce is basically an attempt to get through mutual agreement, something that one has given up hope through violence. 
uh, ancient society they did not value trade particularly because of ignorance of the compass so it forced them not to lose sight of the coast during their navigations more than it was absolutely necessary also religious prejudices were opposed to maritime trade among several people of ancient times however the spirit of modern people is essentially commercial then um in the ancient republic the practice of slavery was almost universal something which was severe and cruel and which made it easy and possible for the people to actively participate in the political affairs of the state here the people uh, excludes slaves who are not considered as citizens of a society whereas um in the modern states the absence of slavery joined to the progress of civilization and has given us more humane practices uh, cruelty has become generally alien and because of abstract reasoning and the public good it has made it almost impossible for us to uh, have uh, the practice of slavery finally one sees a pure deep and sincere patriotism among the ancients towards their community whereas the moderns are struck by love of individual independence so based on the above differences freedom cannot be the same among the moderns as it was among the ancients the freedom in the ancient times was everything that assured the citizens the biggest share in the exercise of political power the freedom of modern times is everything which guarantees the citizens independence from the government uh moderns need calm and various satisfactions that its loss pre- preventing its being disturbed satisfactions in an expansive individual freedom any legislation demanding the sacrifice of these satisfactions is incompatible with the present state of human race all right with that i'm going to end this session thank you for watching this video i hope it was some sort of help in understanding benjamin's conception uh, of what he thought was liberty through this comparison uh, please subscribe to our channel for more videos on political science keep liking keep sharing thank you and goodbye